In this short video, I'll be taking you through how I would approach answering the IGCSE Geography Cambridge Paper 2 exam, in particular the map skills part of that exam for the November 2023 question paper 2-2. So why this video? Really, it takes you through how I would approach answering this section of the exam, and it offers you hints and tips and sort of different, all the different ways you can approach these questions and how you can apply them as they go. I would strongly suggest that as you watch this video, you have open the resources for this exam and you can see that in the link in the comment section but also make sure that you more importantly make sure you practice these questions by completing other exam questions applying the skills that i've shown you in this video so why map skill question why in particular do i go through these well they are exams that as part of the exam that always comes up for the cambridge igcse geography exam for paper two they are worth 20 marks out of possible 60. it is compulsory I would advise you spend about 30 minutes doing it. And although they're usually on assessment and rivers, they are also taking inspiration from coasts and tourism. But what's really useful about this is that you know, the skills that they ask for map skills are transferable to other exam papers. So you can master those skills. You know you're within a good shout of getting a very good portion of the marks for this exam. And so when sitting in the exam, make sure you have a protractor, really useful for bearings. A ruler, which I'll show you all the different ways you can use that for, not only just to use for scale. A pencil and a rubber and a sharpener to make sure you highlight is also useful and a rubber as well. A pencil to plot on the various cross-sectional graphs, particularly as it's easier to rub out if you make a mistake. So, full start in the exam, I would strongly recommend that you draw this onto your map. A compass with all the various bearings really useful and this particular exam this example will show you why and you identify the scale before so this one is a 125,000 scale which means that one centimeter on the map is 250 meters in real life and remember another very common scale is 1 to 50,000 meters so one centimeter on the map is 500 meters in real life and it's also really useful to work out the contour line intervals which in this case are five meters Okay, so let's move on to the first question. The first question, as always for these exams, starts off with you having a figure drawn on the exam paper and you have to sort of find that area in the, um, in the exam paper. So I would strongly recommend that you draw on that area onto your map. And remember that these two areas, the one on the map and the one on the exam paper are exactly the same dimension. So in this case, each square is four centimeters by four centimeters. And that's really important to note. So let's move through. So again, sometimes four marks, sometimes five marks. You have to look at the map extract and identify the following features. So let's start off. For this, you need the key. So we're looking at type of road at A. Okay, so I need to find A. Okay, so not all of the, the road has been drawn. It stops at the intersection of that red road that's going from north to south. Okay, so we need to first identify this road. Okay, so if I look here, I could think it's the same colour as this B road here. So I might put the secondary road, but on closer inspection, and this is where you need to be really careful, the colours are actually slightly lighter for the road we want. So it's a road generally more than four metres wide as well. If it's a B road or an A road, try and find if it's been, if the road number has been written on. So in this case, you can see the B706 has been written on. In case that's a secondary road, we can't see that, so it might be something smaller. Land use at B, okay, so I need to be focusing on this area. And again, it looks like vegetation, so coniferous trees. Can't see anything else. Feature C, SCH. Okay, so again, we go to the general features and we find SCH, which is school. And remember that these keys are sequential. So you if the first symbol, so if you take where it says wind pump and wind turbine, you can see that the smaller wind pump is the one on the left. Okay, so that was the symbol where I'd write wind pump, and if it was the one on the right, I would write wind turbine. So they are sequential. And the next one requires me to look at the height above sea level on the contour line at D. Okay, so this is D, and we take it through to what we mean by the contour lines, and we can see here, okay, so that's 150 meters. So I'm going to write these answers in and now check. So again, take it really nice and slowly. Remember to check carefully all of the area, all of the symbols, focus particularly on what they want. So type of road A, that focuses where to look at the key. The land use, V, 
feature height above sea level. Okay, some common questions now, some typical skills that come up, often grouped together, like you can see here, working out the distance, working out direction, sometimes it can be bearing, and the six figure grid reference. So the first one, we're going from the station at Dunlops, so that's where we start, to the train station at Stewarton. So find the start and find the end. Remembering the scale, one centimetre on the map is 250 metres in real life, and we need to work out the kilometres. So along the railway line, and we identified the railway line, and what I might be tempted to do is highlight that, or just to have it make very clearly what, where I need to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is break up the route into as many straight parts as possible. So here we go. I'm going to take out my ruler, and I'm going to measure each straight part as we go through, writing it down somewhere, maybe on a scrap piece of paper. And then the final little bit there, 0.5 centimetres. That's the last little bit to arrive at the straight line at Stewarton. So once I've worked out all those straight line parts, I'm going to add them together, which gives me a total of 15.2 centimetres. Divide that by four. It's one centimetre on the map, it's 250 metres in real life. So to do that, I need to divide by four to work out the kilometres. And I'm going to write the answer at 3.8, which is at the top end of the accepted range of marks. So remember, once you've got that, you can either use an alternative method to use a piece of string, but if you forget the piece of string, you can then, and just, which is simpler because then you can put that up against a ruler, break it up into as many straight parts as possible, measure those straight parts, add them together, divide by the scale. So now what we need to do, once we've still got the start and we've got the end, go back to our little compass with all the bearings that we drew on at the start on our map because that's going to be really important. First thing we do, we draw a little north arrow going straight up the map from our start point. We then draw a straight line that connects the two locations, so from the start to the end, the two train stations. We then take out our um, protractor and we measure with naught going up, so north facing towards naught, 90 east, 180 south. We then measure the number of degrees, which in this case is 168 degrees. We plot the line in our little compass, 168 degrees, and then we work out that leans closer towards south south east. And so I write the answer, south, south, east. And that's all you do. Draw a straight line between the start and the end points. Take out the protractor, measure the angle, which in this case, if it was bearings, we just have to write 168. But because it's not, we then put that onto our compass that we drew at the start. And because it's closer towards south, south, east, we then write that as our answer. OK, now we need to draw the six, or work out the six figure reference for the railway station at Stewarton. So the railway station is that red circle. We've identified it at previous questions, because it was the end points. So we find the feature and we circle if we are unsure. We then take out our ruler and double check that each grid square on this particularly scaled map is a four by four centimeter um, square, which it is. So we've done those two checks. Now we need to work out the four figure reference. And remember, when you start off with the four figure reference, you're finding out the coordinates for the bottom left-hand corner of the square that feature is in. So we go along the corridor to the number that's in line with the bottom left-hand corner, which is 41, and then we go up the stairs to the number that is in line with the bottom left-hand corner, in this case, 46. And so we write that answer down, leaving a gap between the, for the third and sixth number, which forms the six-figure grid reference. So for a six-figure reference, one point is roughly every four millimetres. So we take out our ruler and we can see that the railway station, the centre of the railway station is at 31 millimetres. If I divide that by four, it gives me 7.75. Now what I'm going to do is say that leans more towards seven. Okay, if it was something like eight, I would probably put eight, but I want it to be slightly higher for it to be eight. I'm going to put that at seven, but you can see that they do give you some allowances. And then we go up the stairs. So we take my ruler out again, and we go up the stairs with naught at the bottom of the line, so 4.6 and 4 towards 4.7. And that number is 2 millimetres. Divide that by 5, and it gives me 0.5. Now, the reason I write 1 and not 0, it is 1, because if it was 0, the centre of that red circle would be physically on the blue line 4.6. And so I write my answer 4.17461. And if you look at the possible responses, you can get away with writing 8. 
And this question is particularly nice because they give you a range of options. But if you do it in the method I suggested, you are highly likely to get the desired mark, the desired answer from the exam board. OK, now we need to identify three tourist facilities shown on the whole of the map extract. And for this, you need to look at the key. Sometimes the key is really useful because it actually gives you um, sometimes the key is structured in such a way that blue symbols, in this particular case, are actually tourist and leisure information. As well, you can look at other parts of the key. So in this case, we can look at things that might attract people, might facilitate tourism in that area. And in this case, there'd be like recreational routes, national trails, footpaths, things for people to do, including cycle trails. So if we go to the top of the map, I'm going to circle any of these potentially um, tourist attractions. And you can see here, this is the definition of what I've used. I tell them to share with my students and you can find this in other videos that I've done just to share it to my channel. And uh, particularly when interpreting photos. So here we're looking for those blue symbols. We can find some here, the blue symbols that we want. And so we've got, in this case, we've got a picnic site, a walk or trails, and we've got a public house. There already we've got three tourist facilities. But if I was to go to the bottom of the map, we can see two others. We've got recreation center, and we've got castle or remains. Oh, so I could write that down because that would also facilitate tourism in the area. But I'm just going to go for my original three. Now, these questions are perhaps the hardest ones that you'll be asked in this exam paper, the cross-section area. And we're going to take um, the first part where you have to identify feature X and Y. Now, again, to remember the map extract, anything in the exam is exactly the same dimensions as the map. So what I'm going to do is plot on the six figure grid reference of those two points at the bottom of figure 1.2. So 400475 and 430475. I'm going to plot that line on the map. And just to show you that the 12 centimeters, that each line is 12 centimeters. So once I've plotted on this red line, so in this particular case it's a red line, you might just do a pencil line, we can then start answering the question. So if we look at this, you can see that the mass, which has already been labelled on, appears at 34 millimetres and the, um, and we can double check at the bottom. Yep, so at 34 millimetres, you can see the symbol for a mast. And then if we look at the top, we've got feature X. So feature X appears at 43 millimetres along the line. Okay, so we're going to go for railway. Okay, 43 millimetres along the line. Yep, that is a railway because that's the feature that appears. Then we're going to go to feature Y. Feature Y appears at 4.9 millimeters, centimeters, sorry, along that line. And so there you can see there is a main road because I've just double checked that against my key. It's not thick to be a dual carriageway. It's a singular red line, so it's a main road. So again, always putting naught centimeters of the ruler on the left hand edge and you measure from left to right. And remember the map extract and the extracts in the exam on the exam paper are exactly the same dimensions. Okay, so here I'm just going to write the answers in railway and main road. Again, things help you feature at X. So I'm looking at a feature on the map. A road is a feature. A railway is a feature. So again, we need to go back to this and we need to draw on the rest of the cross section because we're answering now the final part of this for one mark. And I do think this is a lot to do for one mark. But on this map, so I'm going to, I'm going to here is easier for me, but on your exam, I might be very tempted to draw on the start and end point of where of the cross section you have to draw on. If I was to zoom in, what we're looking at to do is make a note of every single time the contour line crosses the red line. And again, I put naught at the start of the extract. So, every, so I'm, I'm going to write down the centimeters every time a contour line crosses the red line. So in this case, I'm going to start with the thicker one, 125, and that crosses my red line 0.8 centimetres. The 115 line, because that's been labelled on, crosses at 0 0.3. 120, the difference between 125 and 115, crosses at 0.5. 1110, that's the next line down from 115, is at 0 0.1. And 1, at 1 metre 30, that's the next line up, because I've just realised that I need to put that on, crosses at 1.2 centimetres. And then you could also do 135 at 2.1. So I put those in order that you can see there on the top right. And all I'm going to do is simply plot them on my ruler like this, going through, plotting them on. And once I've plotted these points on, 
I'm just going to connect them like so. And when you look at the mark scheme, it says line slopes down to approximately 105. Yep, that's what we've got. Allow anywhere between 101 and 199. Line should touch the vertical axis. So the line must start on that black line going up the meters above sea level, the y axis, and go across. It should not drop below 100 meters and it should not go above 135. So again, just recap, remembering, all you need to do is work out every, the, dis, the, the, the um, on the ruler at what centimeters or millimeters the contour lines cross the ruler, make a note and then just plot that onto the, with a the height and plot that, then plot that onto the cross section. Okay, so this is the first time I've seen these types of questions, looking at um, the, when they've actually made the final question to be seven marks. So typically this is often a five mark question. So describe and explain the pattern of rural settlement. And what I'm going to do is release, and this happened the first time in the November papers. So I'm, if you just look on my channel, I'm going to release how I would approach the other seven markers from the exam paper. So describe, tell me how the settlements are spread out around the area and explain why does the area have this pattern. So types of rural pattern. There are three types, main broad types. You can see them images on the right hand side. We've got linear forming in a long line, mainly along transport routes. We've got nucleated with a cluster around a central point. It could be some, um, generally a crossroads. Or we've got dispersed, they're scattered around the area, forming a pattern, usually farm buildings and things like that. So I'm now going to go through is just talk about the three different types of settlements and then talk about the factors that affect the site and situation of those settlements. And if you know all this, please skip through to the, in the chapters below to how I responded, or if not, stay just to watch as a bit of a quick recap. So dispersed settlements are ones where the houses are spread out over a wide area. They are often the homes of farmers and can be found in rural areas. They tend to be in areas that are remote or mountainous regions where land is predominantly used for agriculture or there's limited job opportunities. The second type is linear, and these are buildings constructed in lines, often next to a geographical feature like a lake, shore, or a river or roads. Linear settlements follow a roads, um, and they oft it often becomes before the settlement. Okay, so they build something, or like the river came before the settlement, or the road came before the settlement, and they're building along there. You know, for obvious reasons, easier to transport things and things like that. And the final ones, nucleated settlements, and these are where they're grouped together, often around a central feature like a church, crossroad, or industry. And they often have a nucleated pattern because they tend to be in areas of flat relief, a bridging points, or something that means it's safer to be grouped together or easier to be grouped together or beneficial to be grouped together. And these are various reasons I've put that in there. So back to the question. So look at, and remember, the question asks us not to focus on Dunlop and Stewarton. So we're looking at the remainder of the buildings. Typically, they are all spread out. They all seem to be quite individual. They are all spread out in a dispersed pattern. Types of buildings, well, if we look, they've got lots of like FM written next to them. So they're probably farm buildings. Are they found along roads? Yes, typically. And some of them are found near various rivers or streams, maybe small lakes or ponds. So if you go back to this question, what I'd be tempted to do is say things like the buildings are spread around the area, forming a dispersed settlement pattern. This is because most of the buildings are farms and so require lots of land to grow crops or rear animals. The farms are also found along roads to make it easier to travel to other settlements or they are found close to water sources such as streams so they have a water source for their farms. And if we look at the response, I'll just put it back here. Yep, buildings are spread around the area. Yep, first line. Um, they are in a dispersed area. Yep, okay, dispersed settlement pattern. They are, tend to be buildings that are farms, so require lots of land to grow crops or rear animals. The farms found along roads make it easier to travel to other settlements or close to water sources such as streams. And again here, look at the map, you can see that they've put loads of other reasons, particularly are they close to wood for fuel? What about the types of land? Where are they found? Are they sort of concentrated more in some parts of the area? Thanks for watching. Last few comments. Remember to draw on any boxes or lines from the figures of the exam paper onto the A3 map to help you focus. Start drawing a compass with bearings. Identify the scale and contour line interval. Take it slowly and practice. There's a whole massive range of past papers available to you online. Practice, practice by applying the skills 
rewinding this video, applying the skills to other exam questions you have not seen before. If not, I've done a whole range of um, questions, for mainly for question paper 2-2, going back to 2019, so please do check out those videos. Thank you and good luck.